Number 56, Caroline D. Squida. So, I've gotten some questions and I'm going to go over my breast augmentation update as of a year and a half of having the new over the muscle implants, which you can tell clearly when I lift them up or in certain positions, there's a huge divot here. And that is because they are over the muscle. So if you haven't checked out my other videos yet on my breast augmentation in bodybuilding, I'm gonna put the link up here so it's easy for you to check out or you can save it to watch later. Either way. A lot of women in the sport are often told, well, if you're gonna get breast augmentation, you should get it under the muscle because when you're training your muscles and you're gonna get on stage, you want them to look more natural. Depending on your division and depending on your type of training, this will vary per person. And that's what I went over in the first several videos. So now this follow-up video, I'm going over how I feel now, how they've settled, things that I've noticed, and things that I might do differently going forward. So, first and foremost, I still love them. They have settled a lot better than last year in the fact that when I got them in, it was January of 2020, I had to have a revision surgery because one ruptured. And so these implants, that year was just like a lot of nerve pain. So the incisions are underneath and most of the time that's pretty common. So one thing I noticed when I was dieting down for my shows in 2020 was all this nerve pain and just achy feeling in the breasts themselves. And depending on if you get them over or under the muscle, some women will feel that, that's very common. The one thing that is not as common that I was experiencing was I could feel what I thought was scar tissue basically around the inner part of the implant and then on the side. And so I went to my doctor and he's like, I mean, it could be scar tissue, it could be the mesh, which is what I got over the muscle to help them be more supported. So when I don't have a bra on, they won't sag as much as they age and the skin gets looser because the collagen is going to go down, which is what happens with aging. Needless to say, that was a concern for me. So we knocked that out. And so going through that prep, even when I was lean and then I started putting on weight and body fat again, I would still have nerve pain. This year, I have had none of that, thank God. And last year, I did no chest training. This year, I've added some back in, usually like one to two workouts a month. That's it. I'm in wellness. I don't really need to build my chest. I need to build delts, which I can do with several delt movements. And you engage your chest in some of the pressing movements, of course. But, do I need to directly work my chest? No. Sometimes I like to, just because I like to be strong. I love bench pressing, and so I might add it in every now and then, usually dumbbells, just that way I can control full contraction where I'm trying to target in the chest. So, all in all, when it comes to the training aspect, you're gonna have to go by feel for you and also what you wanna look like. Because some women like more of a striated, start, like built chest. Like I like having separation a little bit so that's why I'll keep training it and I like being strong like being able to do push-ups is important for me like as an athlete I want to be able to do push-ups I want to be able to do dumbbell press it just is what it is so that's something I've noticed I also noticed certain bras that worked for me last year don't work for me this year I definitely like more of a medium to high support bra now and even like this bra I think I got from Oh man, I don't remember the brand, but I paid like $29 for it. And this is probably the lowest support I'll wear and I'm not training today. So I always sleep with sports bra on now. I used to be able to sleep without a bra on, not anymore, just because I feel like they shift. I mean, they shift easier because they're not under anything. I didn't have a lot of breast tissue to begin with. So literally some people use the term bolt-ons, which is kind of what they are. But when I don't have a bra on, they will shift, which is why, like, in the beginning, you know, you can see clearly the separation here, the implant being over the muscle. That is the look I wanted. I wanted 
the cleavage to be together, which I had to go up in size, cup size, so that the cleavage was together, and they actually move to sit together. A lot of women who go under the muscle don't realize that's not gonna happen. No matter how many of your exercises you do that the doctor tells you to do, you're pushing implants down or up or over, and I've done them, I had to do them with my first set of implants. When you get them under the muscle, they will never sit the same way like they do for mine now. And that was a huge thing for me. So besides that, um, all in all, no pain, which is great. They've settled. I've actually had increased nipple sensitivity, which some women lose sensitivity altogether. That was not the case for me. Usually like, it was like, I think the first two or three months after surgery, I didn't feel much. Like I literally could not feel anything on the front of the breast. But now everything's great. I'm actually very sensitive on my nipples, TMI. And that's something you just have to be aware of too, is how was your body before surgery? Is it gonna be the same after? Not necessarily. So take that into account. Now, when it comes to certain clothing, I personally don't like the look as much of the way these silicone, or saline, I personally don't like the way these salines sit without a bra on if I'm doing like a halter top or dress or something that's like a low cut dress that I have to just like put sticky um, boobs on for. They will show some rippling and that's because of the lower body fat percentage I'm at. And the implants are filled up almost all the way, they're at 625 so it's pretty full. But just be aware, especially you ladies who like to be leaner year round, that's a risk you gotta be willing to accommodate to. And I chose that because I just didn't want to have silicone. Yes, there's silicone outside, but I didn't want the silicone inside in case of a rupture. If these rupture, I know it right away because it'll deflate and I'll feel it. But needless to say, that's something to just keep in mind. Going forwards, you know, Implants, you actually don't want to keep them for more than 10 to 20 years, 20 at the max, and you should get them switched out. They can grow mold, they can have some toxicity from the saline, silicone, from any of the chemicals that they use to preserve them and shape them. You need to swap them out. So when it comes down to it, when I have to swap them again, hopefully I'll already have kids by then, and I'll actually probably go down in size I would not go higher than this for my physique. Like, no way. They're really big on me, in my opinion. Like, I like them, but I would never go bigger. And if I end up going smaller, might actually, I'm gonna stay over the muscle, but I might actually do silicone, just from the sheer fact that they would be easier to use and to look the way I want in certain tops. So, it's a matter of preference. And it's a first world thing, right? Beauty is a first world thing. It's plastic surgery at the end of the day. But all in all, like mentally, emotionally, I feel a lot better. Sometimes I have this like, oh, what would my life be like without implants? But I still like the way that I look in my body and I'm confident in my look in my body. So that's what women need to look at is the long-term piece. And that's what I preach about everything. Bodybuilding is all about and not the short-term results, but the long-term investment. Just like when you're looking at enhancement or you're looking at your nutrition and your hormones. Like, everything plays a part. And implants are one of those. Like, there's people getting butt implants, which go work in the, out in the gym and grow a butt. Work hard. Don't just put some fluff in your butt. That's not going to sit right after a few years because you sit on your butt all day since we're a sedentary society. Either way, soapbox gone. So I hope you'll found this video helpful. Like I said, go reference my entire series on breast implants in bodybuilding. Drop some other questions below. Would love to go over them in depth because I really am glad to help other women share my experience because it isn't talked about enough.